the Alive Music and Dance Project brought together musicians and dancers from all over the world, collaborating with a common mission. Use music and dance to speak encouragement into the hearts of children and young adults. Producing the live concert was exciting, but we also found it daunting. 18 months of planning and rehearsals. Here and now, we'd like to extend to you an all-access pass and take you backstage into the making of Alive. Joyful is the, is the song that I wanted to use to start everything off, and I knew I needed something that would say, okay, what's coming here? You know, what, what can we expect? I wanted to do, I guess it's really an overture. I thought the best way to do an overture for, for a show like this would be to use you know, a recognizable uh, tune from Beethoven. So what I did was work with Lee and with Johnette, who choreographed this, and said, all right, I need, I want everybody out. I want the, I want the young ballet dancers. I want Lee by himself. I want, I want Lee's crew. I want Julia. We all, you guys all have to come out individually and introduce yourselves by dancing, but then you all have to come together. And so they're, they're going, they're giving me the nod like, yeah, okay, fine, sure. And, and uh, so I'm going to write a song and then I'm going to give it to you and, 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 and see, how, see how it comes together. So I just sort of went crazy with the tune from, from Joyful and handed it to them and, and then I watched the, I watched the rehearsal of choreography and they just totally nailed it. What Joyful says is, is here it comes. It's going to be ballet, it's going to be orchestra, it's going to be band, it's going to be hip hop, it's going to be soloists, uh, it's going to be all of this stuff. So don't go anywhere, you know, and, and it, is, it, really, it really is the overture that, that starts the whole special. One of the real challenges with this special was I love doing big, you know, like live at Red Rocks, One World on top of the Mesa and Monument Valley, going to Italy, going to Vienna, you know. But I, I didn't want the location to get in the way of the message. So we just found ourselves a really big stage and got the best crew possible, the best director, best lighting, best orchestra, best gospel choir, you know, got the best crew who all had a heart for what this, this vision would be. And the audience and the community here just really is a warm audience, loves him, reacts to him, and, and you'll see that in the show. If you notice on stage too, that my piano is not in the center of the stage. I'm over in the corner, you know. So that's really what I wanted. I want. I wanted. To, I, you know, wrote the music. I'm playing the piano, but I really wanted to say, hey, no, no, oh, it's over there. You know, point your camera over there because that's really what the, the message was. Was say, take a look at what this movement is and how this encourages you. All these different dancers. We were looking for a song for the for the little ballerinas, and uh, they range in age from 13 to 15 years old. There's these five girls who are just so exciting to be around, and, and they include my daughter Prima. And I gave Johnette a couple of, uh, of different songs uh, to choose from, and she picked a song that I had originally written for a Christmas album, and it's a piano solo. I am a reasonably emotional guy, especially if my daughter is in, a, is, is in a piece, so we decided, you know what, I can't deal with this with the piano on the stage, so please take the piano off the stage, put it in the audience with my back to these little ballerinas, and I'll be happy to play this song, but please don't make me look, you know? And, uh, and that's, that's the way it came off, but I, you know, it's just, when you see, you know, little girls dancing and, and kids who have 
who have traded that life of bling bling or whatever it now is for, for a 13 year old and then the, the mall life for, for the discipline of, of, of ballet. It makes your heart grow, you know, and uh, I love playing that song, been playing it for years and, and to see my daughter in a group interpreting it was marvelous for me. John had done everything in entertainment that he wanted to do. He'd been there, he'd reached that. But what was still inside of him was this passion as an artist that, that he hadn't uh, examined, hadn't fulfilled yet. And so I think for him it was a, a passion that he had to jump off the cliff and discover. You know, is it in me? Can I do it? It's been great. I cannot even explain how I feel, you know, about that man. He's He's been, for me, in a sense of like business, in a sense of like professional, and on the road, like a father. Like I, I really stand back and I look at it and I see how he works and it's amazing. He's probably one of the nicest people I know. Professional, always up, always positive, always ready to go, always on track and just, it's, it's great. Beautiful piano player, loves his work and loves to, I think really, make sure people know that it's okay to be really expressive with your work. He's very expressive. It's sometimes hard to mix different medias, you know, and this seems to be just gelling, and I think it's because of him and his, he has like an insight that is very special. As an artist, it's the passion inside of him. He needs to create, he needs to relate to the audience. Because so many of us get locked into, we're working, we're just gonna do this job for 30 years. But, you know, the passion needs to be expressed, and for him, that's music.